When it rained, the other engine sometimes teased Duck. This sort of weather ought to suit you, they said, and Duck would laugh with them. But he really didn't like rain any more than they did, and now and then he was tempted to hide in the tunnel on his branch line. Then he remembered what had happened to Henry many years before, and knew that it would be silly. Besides, he always had passengers who wanted to reach their destinations and would be cross if they didn't, not to mention the fat controller. One autumn the rain seemed to go on forever. Day after day it poured, great pools of water spread over the fields, and all the rivers and streams were full to overflowing. Few passengers ventured out unless they had to party of young men, carrying packs on their backs, travelled from Tidmouth to Arlesborough. Hikers, explained Duck's driver, probably on holiday, so they don't want to waste their time, even if it's raining. By the time Duck had set off for Tidmouth again, it seemed to be raining harder than ever. They had not gone far when Duck noticed the rails didn't seem to be there anymore. His driver noticed too. Luckily, because the rain made it difficult to see properly, they were not going too fast and could stop easily. As they watched, part of the embankment slivered sideways and more rails disappeared. Back, Duck! Back! urged the driver. Duck didn't need telling twice. A little later, the station master came running onto the platform. Emergency, he told them. One of those hikers has been caught in a landslide on the cliffs and needs the hospital. But the road is out as well as the railway, and it will take ages for an ambulance to come the long way round. Sounds like a job for Harold, remarked Duck. The station master stared. Of course, he said. Well done, Duck. It's a good job you haven't let the rain send your brain rusty. Ah, said Harold when he heard the news. But we can't leave the poor chap there for even more landslides to fall on him, can we? Quickly, he was into the air and away. And though the wind was against him, it wasn't long before they reached the place. The hikers had been walking along a cliff path. Part of it had collapsed and slipped down the cliffside, taking one of the hikers with it but the fall had broken one of his arms, and in any case, the cliff was too steep for him to have climbed back up. Harold hovered anxiously a few feet above the injured man. Very cautiously, a rescue officer was winched down on a strong cable. The injured hiker was helped onto a special stretcher, and when he had been securely strapped to it, he was pulled up into Harold. Then the cable was let down again, so that the rescue officer could be pulled up too. Phew, he said. Thank goodness that's done. Quick, let's get away from these cliffs before the wind blows any harder. But once above the cliff, the wind helped. They landed gently on the lawn near the car park, and the hiker was taken into safe hands to have his arm put in a plaster. Well done, Harold, said the doctor. Our young friend's accident has spoilt his holiday, but thanks to you, he'll soon be... He broke off and glanced up at the sky. As right as rain, I suppose. As for Duck, he had a holiday too. He was stuck at Arsdale for a week while the line was repaired. The passengers had a long journey by bus. But poor Duck couldn't go anywhere. He says he doesn't want another holiday. They're too boring. <laughs> <laughs>